Hello everyone, welcome back to the park. We're doing an in-park update today because Universal Islands of Adventure, there's a lot of stuff going on. New merch, new attraction updates, new restaurants, things like that. So I thought, hey, let's go out to the park. Let's do a little update. We're about the middle of February, middle of Mardi Gras season, but there is some new stuff other than Mardi Gras. So let's just waste no more time and see what's new at Universal Orlando. Not sure how well you can see it with the sun's glare, but we are starting today at Islands of Adventure. Normally I start at Universal Studios, but Islands of Adventure actually has some interesting updates that I want to hit first. We love Islands of Adventure over here. And the first update comes in the main port of entry store, but they have it in all the stores. They have this new light up bumblebee popcorn bucket. I just turned off, but the first fill is free and it's $35. So if you want to rep Transformers, which is a really fun attraction, really fun IP, here you go. You can do so with the new Bumblebee Bucket. And for those who missed out on some of that Jurassic Park 30th anniversary merch, it's actually on sale. So the shirt here, originally 40, is now $27.99. This sort of a sort of gray wash shirt. I really like the shirt. Spirit Jersey 2, originally $80, is now $55.99. And here's the back. Really, really sick design. I really like this. I'm not a huge Spirit Jersey guy, but really like this. And last but not least, we have this denim jacket, which is now $76.99, originally $110. And here's the back. Oh, okay. There we go. There's the back. This one's a little hard to get on and off the rack, but very cool nonetheless. And just for a warning, this is going to be a very merch heavy video. There's lots of new merch that I really want to show off, but there's actually a giveaway at the end of this video for a very special merch item I'm going to show in just a second. But stay tuned to the end for that giveaway and to know the secret phrase, the secret question that you must answer in order to be entered for the giveaway. But anyway, let's get on with the rest of the park. So the biggest update in Marvel Superhero Island seems to be that everything is walled off. There are walls lining the streets. The front of the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man is walled off, leading people to go through the extended queue. So Marvel is undergoing a lot of changes, I'm guessing, in sort of the pavement region, just like retouching the outside of, of the buildings and things like that, which is great. A lot of stuff like that is going to be happening for the next couple of years until Epic Universe opens, just to get the parks ready, get the parks looking as pristine as they can. So I'm all for the changes. It just makes Marvel a little harder to navigate, but the pro is you get to go through the Spider-Man extended queue and see the great J. Jonah Jameson statue that they just fixed up last year. So overall a win. And in regards to Toon Lagoon, there's one big update that actually brought me out to the park, brought me out to this park at least, and that is something new that's appeared in the UOAP lounge. So the new UOAP lounge, are not new anymore, it's over here in the Betty Boop shop, and they have all kinds of UOAP merchandise, and it's a really cool vibe. If you're a pass holder, come check it out. The special merch item that has appeared in the UOAP lounge exclusively is the first bit of Epic Universe merch. So they dropped this Epic Universe shirt on the website and now it's available in the park. It's one of those like where no two items are exactly the same, so they do vary. I mentioned in my Epic Universe video, they dropped a shirt online. This, I guessing, is the same shirt that they're dropping in the theme park. So again, if you're a pass holder, you can come out here and get it. Don't miss it um, because it does like close at four. So that's why I wanted to come over here quick, get this part of the video done. Right now, you might be able to hear some of the construction, but Popeyes is down for its yearly scheduled maintenance. All three of the water rides go down early on in the year. And now it is time for Popeye to be closed. So. You know, gotta have that maintenance. Oh, the adventure of rivers. I'm excited to see the better version of you in Hollywood. I fly off to Hollywood next week, so I'm excited to see Jurassic World. Oh, here it comes. Oh, oh, I got a little bit of wet on the camera. But yes, I'm excited to see Jurassic World the ride and all the Jurassic World things they have over in Hollywood next week. So expect some Hollywood vlogs coming soon. Okay, and our next update brings us to yet another gift shop, but this is the All Hallows Eve Boutique, the spooky store at Allen's Adventure, and they just got a Mardi Gras overlay. Just wanted to show you inside, show you some of the decor and some of the Mardi Gras merchandise, because I didn't really talk about that much, so let's pop inside. I love these sort of stained glass decorations that have this, uh, this little voodoo doll at the bottom. How cute. They always do really cool stained glass for the store, the doors at the entrance. This hoodie, I love. Love that it's purple, very simple front, and then the back has this incredible graphic that they have on like signs. They have it on, they have like a, a picture frame, other shirts, lots of merch with this new Baron 
character on it, which I absolutely love. And if you want to get a little more colorful, repping Baron Tauntaun, that's his name, officially, we have this tie-dye shirt. This is $37. And all around this front section, they have these graphics with the Baron on it in different styles. So it looks like tarot cards, kind of continuing the tarot vibe from Halloween Horror Nights. We have the Fool here. We have a more traditional Baron look with the Moon. Tucked away back here, this guy looks like the Grim Reaper, so I'm guessing this is death. And here we have what looks to be the king. And they have a plushie of this little gator mascot. This is like the king gator from the parade, but I feel like they're trying to come for Earl's spot. Or little Boo's spot, depending on who you're talking to. But yeah, little plushie here. $25. And speaking of the gator, they have a whole little collection. They have a t-shirt. This one here is $30 uh, with the gator image here. Hats, pins... And uh, if you remember from Halloween Hornets, they had a flannel. Now they have a Mardi Gras flannel. This is $75 and has this awesome graphic on the back. I love this. I love they're leaning more into this. This is like unique merch, if I could put it back. Unique merch. More of this, please. And here you can see no more Odd Fellow. Instead, we just have the hearse. It's been in a few stores in the past with some skulls and candles and herbs and all kinds of things meant to be sort of an abandoned bayou hearse so really cool style here and something really sad to me is that they moved removed i should say all of the uh moldomatic machines so all the machines are gone and nowhere to be found in the park so here you would have maybe a little boo a black cat whatever different spooky one uh, but here it is no more and it seems like some of the universal monsters merch is also on sale we have this really cool frankenstein sort of a camp shirt as is described on sale here for $48.99, which is, I mean, not bad when it comes to universal prices. Stay focused. It was originally like 70 bucks, so this is quite a discount. And as far as Mardi Gras merch goes, the talk of the town is another popcorn bucket, the Gator bucket, that does light up, as you can see. Here's it without it being lit up, and this is also $30, so a little cheaper than the Bumblebee. And uh, sort of like an original mascot. They have this guy on some other merch, but really cute, really big too. Like, it's a cool little... A little collectible if you want to not put popcorn in it, which I don't really put popcorn in the popcorn buckets. I just like them for display. As you might be able to tell, there's some really cool, like, runes up here. Give me very big, like, Dr. Oddfellow feels. And back here, we have no more Madame Bazile. We have instead, like, a pirate table with these projected runes on the table, which, absolutely awesome. Really looks like it's, like, facing the ocean. Really great detail. Not, like, a whole lot in terms of, like, figure. Like, obviously, there's no figures, but lots and lots of great detail, nonetheless. Yeah, just put a figure here, and it'll be absolutely perfect. The All Hallows Eve Bayou Store, a lot of fun. It's been a while since we've had a voodoo or Mardi Gras themed overlay to the store. This is not a voodoo store, this is a bayou store. It's a little different. Pretty subtle what it's seeming, but a lot of fun regardless. Now let me let y'all in on a little bit of my process. Sometimes you come here and you plan on filming certain things. I had certain things I had set. I wanted to film. I wanted to film the All Hallows Eve Store. I wanted to get the Epic Universe merch. And then something like this opens today. The Circus McGurkis Cafe had been under a person for quite a while and uh, they got an all new menu and uh, they're implementing mobile ordering. So we're going to check it out. Maybe get something small. I'm not super hungry, but I have to come here. I'd have to check it out. That's my YouTuber obligation. If I'm going to be doing updates, I got to be doing the thing that's most up to date and eat at the newest restaurant. So let's head in to Circus McGurkis and see what's happened. See what the changes are. All right. And here's a little bit of a look at the new menu. You can pause it to get specifics, but they have a popcorn shrimp box, roast beef sandwich, a redfish, bluefish poke bowl. Sounds really fun. Um, I might be getting the pizza pasta. Something kind of simple, something chill for this restaurant. This is kind of like a family themed restaurant, but they're adding some new exciting options for those who want to try things other than, you know, burgers and chicken nuggets. So I respect that.
Okay, so we just sat down, and this is all mobile order now. So they used to have like a walk-up counter where you can just kind of go pick it up, but now it's all mobile order, so you can go here or to the mobile pickup. So they have a mobile pickup window outside. But yeah, if you're eating inside, you can get a look at the menu here with actual images, which I appreciate. I love when Universal does, except for that one. Um, I love when Universal adds images. Excited to see how this food is. It looks really, really good. Let me just say the presentation here is off the chain. I love how they like shaded it to look like green eggs and ham from the book. That looks awesome. And then of course, this just looks fantastic. It's got meatballs. I love the meatballs at Louis, so hopefully it's the same. Um, and yeah, I'll give you all a little review when I'm done here because uh, I got a lot of food here. Okay, so I popped over here to this really strangely designed alcove right here outside of Swiss Landing. Let's talk about Circus McGurkles because I have a few interesting thoughts. So the two food items, the magical meatball, whatever magical surprise, that item was pretty good. It's pretty comparable to the Louis spaghetti meatballs. So pretty basic, it's nothing that crazy, but the presentation is really nice. It has that kind of splatter effect that they do a lot with the Minions food, which is really fun. There's definitely a lot of food there. It's very filling. So if you have two people, you could probably split it and be fine. The green eggs and ham chocolate cheesecake wins A plus for presentation. Looks exactly like the books. It even has like this weird shading effect. It's awesome. Taste wise, it's about what you'd expect from a chocolate cheesecake. Nothing too crazy. It's not bad. None of the food is bad. I mean, I only got those two things. Really what I was most impressed with was the presentation and the sort of arrangement of the restaurant itself. It feels a lot cleaner. There's a lot more seating now that they don't have the registers. And it carries a lot of that signature theming from Seuss Landing without doing anything too crazy. So overall, it's a plus. Excited to see more places like this in the parks. And uh, yeah, I will be going back to Cirque McGurkis to get some new and exciting food over here in Islands, which desperately needed some great quick service options. And as we take one look out into the lagoon, we say farewell to Iowa for the day. Beautiful park. I'm gonna start using this alcove for filming because it's really nice, really quiet and uh, gives you great view of the entire, entire park. As we travel through time and space to get to Universal Studios Florida, I wanna say if you're enjoying the video thus far, please do me a favor and leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It would be truly appreciated and would allow me to do more videos like this one. Thanks, and let's get back to the video. Okay, a little update here at Mel's. Um, there actually is no update because this is still closed. This thing's been closed for literally almost a complete year um, over here at Mel's Drive-In. They had a show out here temporary, just ended this week. Um, I have a lot of friends, uh, Zombie Chris, notoriously, number one fan of the drive-in and dance show. But yeah, just waiting on the day when Mel's opens. We got Circus McGurkis, come on, let's open up Mel's. This is one of my favorite places at Universal Studios Florida to eat, it's just because it's such a classic, such a classic vibe. Coming over to the former Kid Zone area, we have a brand new sort of standee display for Kung Fu Panda 4. In theaters March 8th, we have Po Shifu Tai Lung, who I'm excited is going to be back in this movie. And then uh, a few of the other little characters here. Really cool they're promoting this. I, I really love the Kung Fu Panda series. I'm excited to see what representation it gets in the new DreamWorks land. And speaking of the new DreamWorks land, wahoo, look at all of this construction progress. We have foliage on Trek's house, which has come along quite a ways since I last showed in, I think my Future of Universal video. And then if you look all the way down there, we have some new details on the troller coaster. We have this sort of spider web, the spider all the way back there. And then Shrek's outhouse in front of it, which I think just got dropped today, and some more like scaffolding for the play area. This thing is coming along. I would not be surprised if this thing opens by summer, like maybe late summer, like how Minions open, but summer nonetheless. Lots and lots of big updates over here in DreamWorks, and I'm really excited for this to open. It's looking better and better the more we get to look at it. It's insane to me just how close this thing is to the entrance of ET. Here's the ET gift shop, by the way, and here, is DreamWorks. So I wonder if they are ever going to reroute E.T.'s entrance because it would be kind of a pain in the butt to have to keep going in here. You're kind of blocking the amazing facade there. So I wonder if they're eventually going to move it, but this looks fantastic. And also, let's just take a minute to admire the scenery here. It's beautiful. It's golden hour. The sun is setting. The parade is going to begin in a little while for Mardi Gras. I just want to say at this point, hope you're having a good day. Hope you're having a good night, morning, whenever you're watching this, whenever I upload this video. But nothing, nothing really beats this view. This is my favorite theme park. And, uh, I just love coming to this park. Horror Nights, not Horror Nights, Mardi Gras, Holidays, regular park. Just, come on, come on. Here's a million dollar question. If you could change The Simpsons, if you had the power to completely change this area, what would you do with it? Would you keep it Simpsons, change the ride? Would you leave it as is? Would you change to a completely different IP? Original idea, the whole Simpsons area from The Simpsons ride all the way down to Springfield. What would you do with it if you had the power to change it? Leave it in the comments below, I wanna know. Oh, I love it in here. For those who don't know, Nocturnale is my favorite spot in the parks. 
to go to to just hang out run around enjoy the atmosphere and there's actually an update in here so double win you get to see something cool and explore my favorite part of the park okay it's super hard to see on camera but there's a big wall here and if you're wondering hey this doesn't normally have a wall yeah there isn't normally a wall but now there's a wall very curious now that wall is kind of interesting so i wanted to come out here in a better lighting to kind of talk about this because there may be something happening with this wall that may indicate some update to the wand technology i wouldn't be surprised if they do something like this because of epic universe and the new wizarding world land they want to have a new version of the wand technology and it's a little finicky you know i have a couple wands sometimes they work sometimes they don't so it would be interesting to see if this is actually the beginning of updates maybe they're starting in nocturne alley adding a new wand spot maybe they're going to update the ones they already have in the main diagon alley really interesting Everybody's getting ready for the parade. It's about an hour until the parade starts, but I am gonna head into the final show of the horror makeup show. Cause I've never done that before. And I think that'd be a lot of fun. Have I ever told y'all how much I love this lobby? Like, it's made for me. Classic monsters, movie props. We have the original statue from the original Phantom of the Opera horror makeup show. Still here. I know people are kind of hit or miss on Chucky, especially the house at HHN. I liked it, but I love Chucky. So it's awesome to get to see a Chucky doll and, and a Michael mask. We, we love Michael too, but absolutely incredible. Hey, I know these guys. What's up, boys? They're not going to talk back to me, but still. It's okay to say hello. Okay, thank you for staying till the end of the video. I had a really fun time exploring the new updates, things going on, trying Circus McGurgus again. It was a great time hanging out in the park. And to show my appreciation for 2,000 subscribers and to those who stayed till the end of the video, I'm gonna let you know about a special giveaway that I'm doing for for one of these. This is a size XL. By the way, I thought I'd just let you know, these do run a bit small. So if you're size large or medium, this should work for you. So to enter in this giveaway, you gotta be subscribed to the channel, you gotta like the video, and you gotta leave down in the comments, what ride at Epic Universe are you most looking forward to? Those three things. Once you do those three things, you're entered in to win this giveaway. Right now, I'm doing United States only. I might do for future giveaways international, but for right now, I'm doing this United States only. So sorry to my international friends. There'll be more giveaways to come. But for now, for the first one, we're gonna be doing United States only. The winner for this giveaway will be selected on March 1st. So you have until then to enter in this giveaway again, to win this Epic Universe exclusive shirt in the park. But regardless, thank you all for watching this video. If you like this video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. We talk about Universal all around the world, but mostly Universal Orlando. Next time you see me, I will be in California at that Universal vlogging. So I think that'll be a lot of fun. Kind of nervous, but I'm also excited. So I can't wait to show you all my first experience with that park. So I'm going to get going. I got to drive home. So again, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.